in our little a box here, which is an oscillator, which produces uh, waves on this string, uh, a frequency f, and the basically this is attached to a string, which is then attached to a pulley here, fixed to a pulley, and hanging from that pulley is a mass m, and the distance between the oscillator and the pulley has a length l, and uh, basically we want to uh, given a node to node distance, so we're given a node to node distance d, and recall that the node to node distance here. This is a node and this is a node and this is D. Then D is equal to lambda over two. This will be useful. So we're given D and uh, we want to explain why we only get certain values of D. Well, so if you recall for, uh, for waves on a string, we have L is equal to N lambda over two uh, and that means that uh, lambda here, which is equal to 2d, is equal to 2l over n. So you can cancel these out. And that means d is going to be equal to l over n. And n here are integers. This is the important part. One, two, three dot dot dot. So the reason we only get two or certain values for d is because l is fixed and n is for integers. So this is not a continuous function, this is a discrete function because n is integers. So that's why we only get certain values for b for uh, for d. And so in part b we're asked to graph um, and what I've done is uh, I've used some plotting software and uh, I have plotted these values for you here for you to look at. And I will bring these onto the screen right now. So if we look at the data that we're given in the textbook here, and we plot uh, mu d squared here, which is mu is the mass per unit length, uh, versus m, the the mass hanging from the pulley here, we get something, uh, and what's important to see is that it follows, it looks like it follows like a linear trend, and we want to explain why the data follows a linear trend, follows a straight line. And the reason uh, for this is as follows, and that's because if you look at what mu d square is, mu d squared is going to be equal to mu times lambda over 2 squared, so it's mu lambda squared over four, and uh, that's going to be equal through our equation, v is equal to root f over mu. We can rewrite this as f lambda squared over two v squared. And through v equals lambda f, we can write that as, we know what the tension is. Uh, the tension is going to be mg. We can write this as mg lambda squared divided by two lambda squared f squared, where here we've used f, the tension is mg, and we've used v is equal to lambda f. So these cancel. And then what you get is uh, you get mg over two f squared. So I'm gonna write this as one, uh, I will write this as, g over 2f squared times m. So this here, g is a constant. The frequency from our oscillator is a constant. So this whole thing here is a constant. This is a variable here, m. It's our uh, independent variable. And this is our dependent variable, mu d squared. And we see that this is just of the form y is equal to mx plus b where b is going to be 0, and our slope m is this g over 2f squared. So that's why it's linear, is because when we look at mu d squared versus m, it uh, it's a linear function with a varying, uh, it's a linear function with a slope of g over 2f squared. So if we use um, some data software to do a best fit line here, what we find is that the best fit line has a slope and this is programming, and I can't program in front of you to do this fit, so I'm just going to have to tell you what that slope is. And that slope is going to be 0 
1.0088 meters. Uh, and so based on this slope, we want to determine the frequency f. And we can determine that uh, like this. We know that this is going to have to be equal to g over 2f squared. So that means f is going to be the square root of 9.8 meters per second squared over 2 times 0 0.001088 meters here. And that's equal to 67.1 hertz. Great. So finally, um, moving on to part D here, uh, what we want to do is uh, for a string with mass per unit length 0 0.026 grams per centimeter, we want to find uh, M given that D is equal to 24 centimeters. Find it in grams. So this is easy. We know that mu d squared is equal to our slope times m. And therefore, m is going to be mu d squared divided by our slope. And we've done this here. Uh, that's simply going to be 0 0.026 grams per centimeter. times 24 centimeters squared. And now let's be careful with our units. So I've transformed from meters to centimeters. That gives us a grand value of 137.64 grams. All right. <clears throat> 